Hello, hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Marami po sa mga netizen na nagtatanong at naghahanap tungkol sa aking anak na Fidabit. Ito po ang aking babasahin ngayon. Ang mga nakasulat dito ay iyong iba ay sagot niya sa Fidabit ni Rapi sa Bigami Case. Aking babasahin rin ang Fidabit ni Rapi, then ang sagot ni Grandy. Halina po kayo at samahan ninyo akong uh, mapanood at pakinggan nito. Huwag po ninyong kalilimutan mag-like at subscribe. Ito po ay affidavit ni Rafi sa statement na kanyang final sa bigami case. Affidavit 2.9 paragraph. Then sometimes in 1994, during which I was already back in the Philippines, I received a call from complainant regarding some papers that I might need to sign in connection with my daughter's status in the United States, U.S. As I have earlier said, complainant would always have a way of contacting me. And it was on said occasion that I found out that she married an American in 1992 and that Complainant and my daughter were already residing in the United States. Ito po ang sagot ni Grandy, Avidavit 2.9. When I was in my teens, my mother told me that my biological father was alive and was on public channels in the Philippines. My mother's relationship and I were tense during this time due to the stark changes in culture between the American and Filipino lifestyle. It was during this time that I requested to see Rafi Tulfo and my family went through great lengths to connect both of us together. Rafi wrote that we were living in the United States in 1992 to 1994, which is incorrect. I was still living in the Philippines in 1992, traveling to the Philippine Embassy numerous times a year with my aunts in order to obtain an Italian visa to join my mother who was residing in Italy. I obtained a visa in 1994 and joined my mother in Italy in July of that year. We left Italy in 1995 for the United States. When I spent time with Rafi Tulfo, He referred to Jocelyn as his wife, but I share no details of our time together with my mother due to our strained relationship. In truth, the more I spent time with my biological father, the more the divide between my mother and I grew. Rafi Tulfo, Avidabit 2.14 A few years after that visit in 2010, my daughter again came back to the Philippines twice. The last time even with her boyfriend. I billeted them at the Sofitel Hotel and during this last visit, she told me that complainant even sent her thanks to my current wife for taking care of Grandy. In her 2010 visit, she also sent her regards and congratulations to me for my successful and burgeoning career. Grandy Tulfo responds, Afidabit 2.14. My mother never said to say thank you to Jocelyn for taking care of me. This would have been quite odd, considering Jocelyn was the reason for Rafi's abandonment of my pregnant mother. Rafi Tulfo's Afidabit, paragraph 7. Thus, contrary to what complainant is saying, that they were deprived of a good life. They live in a poverty or words of similar import. They actually live the American dream in the U.S. courtesy of his American husband, Mr. Pearson. Grandy Tulfo responds, Avidabit 2.14, paragraph 7. Rafi wrote that we were living the American dream. It is disappointing that a well-traveled and knowledgeable person such as himself would make such an absurd generalization, especially having lived in the United States himself. My experience living the American dream was working at 13 years old, earning $2 an hour at a donut shop, living in a mobile home. This is where people who cannot afford a real house live. 
my mother clipping coupons for hours to buy food at the grocery store, going at a second-hand store to buy clothes, my mother working at a factory conducting back-breaking manual labor, being in college debt to this day. Never once taking vacation as a family when I was young because we could not afford one and so on. This was our so-called American dream. Rafi Tulfo, Avidavit 2.15 I emphasize that during all these visits from my daughter and all the time the complainant made all those calls to me, she already knew since 1994 that I was already married to my present wife. And I vehemently deny that I will take advantage of my daughter's visit in order to be able to bring along my alleged mistresses. At any rate, this allegation is hearsay, immaterial and highly incredible. If I wanted to womanize, I would not need my daughter to be here in the Philippines. Grandy Tulfo response, Afidabit 2.15. I met my father a handful of times and I met two of his mistresses. Rafi Tulfo saw me as an opportunity to leverage that rather than seeing me as his daughter. He always brought his mistresses along when we were together because it was the best subtle feuds for allying Jocelyn's distrust. Rafi Tulpo told me that Jocelyn didn't suspect him of being with his mistress if he was spending quality alone time with his daughter. We spent the night in opulent hotels for which his mistresses were always in tow. He always equipped me with generous shopping funds to keep myself occupied so that he could remain engaged with his mistresses. Rafi Tulfo Avidabit 2.12 Paragraph Then again in 2010, after 11 years of no communication with complainant or my daughter, I suddenly got a call from said complainant. She told me that our daughter would come to the Philippines for a vacation with her relatives here and would want to spend some time with me after a long time. And true enough, my daughter and I spent time together with my present wife and her half-siblings. One of the pictures taken during this occasion showed me with my daughter and her cousins from her mother's side was even posted by complainant in her Facebook account in September 2018, which she captioned, Rafi Tulfo with his daughter Joy. Attached is a printout of the said postmark as Annex 1. Grandi Tulfo, response, Avirabi 2.12. I never met any of Jocelyn's children. Who are my half-siblings? I challenge Jocelyn's children to perjure themselves of this fact and to present supporting evidence of our time together. Note that I have photographic evidence of my time with one of Rafi's mistresses their child together, and a separate photo with Jocelyn. Lastly, I have read his falsified divorce papers with my mother, submitted evidence. It is interesting to read that they had born three additional children, Rafael Tulfo Jr., Edel Tulfo, Tucci Tulfo. I would like to understand who the siblings are and why my name was completely omitted from the divorce decree. It has been over a decade since Rafi and I have spoken. The last time we had spoken to one another, I was a young adult and had asked for financial help since he was always so generous to strangers and generously tip everyone in the service industry. He deflected and said he was busy but would call me when he was available. I never heard from him again. I failed to contact him again as he disconnected his number without providing it to me. And I no longer had a way to connect with him. I could have implored my relatives to find him again, which was easy enough for them to do at that point due to his rising popularity. 
but that callous act in the truth of my adulthood distanced him from me forever. As it was not the first time it had happened, but it was the first time I had the wisdom of age to see clearly. He was always such an eager father. Each time I visited the Philippines with his mistresses in tow, but each time I went back to the United States, his connection with me dissipated like clockwork. My visits were typically marked by summer, but by the time Christmas rolled around, he vanished into the ether. There are no Christmas greetings or Christmas cards, no birthday greetings or birthday cards, no congratulations on my graduation or my recent wedding in 2019. There is nothing. Contacting me. His long-time mistress who has borne him a daughter has my email information. My email has never changed, but Rappi has never reached out. I am happy to report that he seems to have presented their legitimate daughter some opportunities he has deprived from me, such as enrolling her in an elite private school which grooms graduates for international college admissions. He is a godfather to one of my cousin's child and even recently contacted me on Facebook via Jocelyn Sun's account under the guise of not having his own personal Facebook account. After the legal proceedings started on the bigamy case, I was quite shocked to realize that he was able to find me considering my Facebook settings are on the strictest private settings and the name display on my account is merely new friends who attempt to add me on Facebook using information I provide still struggle to find me so I am inadvertently always forced to add them myself. This is why Rapid Tulfo's ability to find me so swiftly and without difficulty came as a shock. I wonder, I wonder pleadingly why he had not bothered to reach out sooner, but his hedonistic motivations were of no consequence to me, so I dismiss his note. Rafi Tulfo was never a father to me. Sa susunod po ay aking sasagutin ang kanyang mga fidabit na aking binasa. Abangan po ninyo. Click and subscribe. Salamat po.